thank you for this opportunity. Welcome to everyone here and um, a very good morning um, to India. It's almost 11 p.m. here on the east side. I represent the University of Rhode Island. We're a um, big public university, the largest one in the state of Rhode Island. And because today's focus is really on the College of Engineering, we're a big university, and I'll, I'll tell you more about it in a second, but the focus will be primarily the College of Engineering. So let's start with the um, location. Um, so far, I think this has been the first school here from New England, so the northeast of the US. Um, our location is very, very convenient in that it's not a super big uh, city, but it's very easy to move around this area and also internationally because URI, which is located in Kingston, Rhode Island, is actually on the Amtrak line. Amtrak is the train that you can um, catch directly from New York or from Boston and get directly to our campus. Also, uh, we're located about 10, 15 minutes from the beaches, and generally Rhode Island is a beautiful state. You'll see a few pictures in just a second. And I just wanted to um, also emphasize the fact that New England in general is, um, is um, a hub of innovation on so many different levels. So we're in a very good company of many other universities that you're familiar with. Um, so here you can see a few pictures just to give you an idea. Rhode Island is the smallest state of the United States, but um, it's truly beautiful. It's called the ocean state. So you have that ocean feel. Um, everything revolves around that culture, a lot of seafood, but also a lot of different kinds of food, especially if you're a foodie. Diversity is a, um, an important element of both our university and also um, of everything happening here in our beautiful state. And um, even though the focus on um, my presentation is the College of Engineering, I just wanted to give you an idea of, of the size of um, our university. We have eight degree granting colleges and you can see them listed over here with over 90 majors and clearly there's a lot for you to choose from and many different opportunities. We have about 15,000 undergraduate students, about 2,000 graduate students, a total of about 20,000 people on campus. Um, uh, currently there are no classes on campus, everything's online. Um, things are being discussed and soon we'll make our decisions regarding the fall. So. One of the biggest questions is why did I actually pick the College of Engineering instead of other colleges? And so let me tell you that right now, more than ever before, the world needs engineers with a lot of vision and also people who are visionary researchers and also developers. And, and our College of Engineering has a lot to offer in that sense. And if you do want to have that high quality of education, you need a lot of investment. So let me just, tell you that over the past decade the university has invested half a billion dollars into the campus into the programs into the people and this is why we have this high quality but when you look at these numbers we have 200 million dollars invested just in the college of engineering and we're very proud of this new building that you just saw in the beginning that cost 125 million dollars and then um, another 25 and a half million that has been invested in some other renovations plus a lot of investment from the industry from the alumni and friends of the college that are numerous again to give you an idea about what it looked like before you have a, a shot on the left and the plan on the right gives you an idea of of the changes and this is a different angle with um, um, all the sizes and dimensions so you can see that it's truly a state-of-the-art building um, but actually it's a combination of buildings uh, an amazing space the facilities inside are incredible and when you walk inside you know exactly that this is way beyond the 21st century I wanted also to show you um, all the different research areas that we have because clearly 
uh, when you want to study something, you want to see, um, you know, what it is that you can study. And so you see advanced materials and alternative energy, biomedical um, solutions, um, water for the world sensors, robotics, um, nanotechnology, cybersecurity, all this stuff is taught and researched. And of course, um, you can then further your um, knowledge and experience in, in these and also many other areas. So we have both undergraduate and graduate programs. At the undergraduate level, you see all these types of engineering that, that um, are available, biomedical, chemical, civil, computer, electrical, industrial, mechanical, and ocean engineering. And we also have plenty of um, interesting undergraduate minors within also the College of Engineering that are listed over here. But I would like to draw your attention in particular to the five-year dual degree program called the International Engineering Program. And IEP is an extremely popular program, both with American and international students. Um, so what happens here is we combine language and uh, you know, the uh, focus on engineering, um, something that you definitely want to pick. And so within five years, you're going to get those two degrees. But the important part is that in the fourth year, you leave the United States and you go to a country where you spend one year both studying and working um, within um, that engineering environment. And you have all the um, countries listed here. Um, the languages that you see on the on the left, you absolutely don't have to know them when you start the program. So it, it really depends if, if you're already proficient in any of those. And if you want to continue that, go ahead and do it. But you can pick one that you don't know and you can learn from scratch. And like I said, um, it's an extremely um, popular and, and very successful program, probably the most successful program on our campus. So as an IEP student, you will become highly proficient in a second language. You will definitely be competitive in both a technical discipline, but also in a global market. Gain hands-on experience, as it's listed over here. Possess valuable cross-cultural skills. Extremely important nowadays because we live in a global uh, world. Build that global network, travel, and also grow as a person. And someone who was not born and raised in the United States, and just like you, I was also a, an international student. I cannot emphasize enough the significance of uh, programs like this. We have more of such programs, but like I said, because tonight is the uh, focus on engineering, I just wanted to talk about this one. Now, um, we have 27 residence halls on our campus, so there's enough space for everybody. And I just wanted to tell you very quickly about this um, approach, the, the philosophy called living and learning communities, and in particular also for um, engineering students. Um, the, the whole philosophy is that all the students who share the same um, major or similar majors or, or some similar interests and whatnot, they, they live in the same building. And um, it's just so much easier to cooperate with everybody and discuss um, whatever issues related to your classes, to your interests, but even to socialize. Um, for instance, you have easy access to student mentors. You have different kinds of meetings with professionals and, and different professional societies. You have review sessions in math and science and <clears throat> other classes social programs, academic advising, and discussions on academic responsibilities and opportunities. So you, you're pretty much an active engineer um, throughout without necessarily having to forget about the social aspect of it all. Um, at the graduate level, we have both master uh, programs, and they're listed over here and some PhD level programs, all of them um, very, very high quality. Um, and all of them really uh, very popular. It's very difficult to pick one that, that would be um, probably more uh, popular than others. Just because we're the ocean state, I will emphasize the ocean engineering here and, it, and also the fact that one of our campuses is right on the ocean where we have our own ship called Endeavor. 
and many um, amazing opportunities um, locally and globally for, for those students as well. Um, another important aspect, and it was already mentioned in, in the investment uh, portion, is the industry collaborations. And there are so many different types of collaborations. So we have job fairs um, on our campus. We have internship opportunities, employment opportunities, research and capstone in which many companies are directly involved and they um, highly support our students. So you have a few um, um, names that are hopefully familiar. And uh, this is clearly not an exhaustive list, those just to give you an idea. Uh, of course, the social aspect of being on campus is extremely important. And one of those um, elements is the, the diversity. And when you take a look at the Society of Women Engineers and the National Society of Black Engineers, Society of Hispanic uh, professional engineers. Those are um, examples of societies and of different kinds of forms of um, celebrating the diversity. Um, the Society of Women Engineers in particular has become, over the past year, has become extremely um, uh, popular and noted on our campus. We also have different team projects, peer-to-peer -peer mentoring, regional and national conferences, conferences and many other opportunities. Now, the nitty and gritty, how do you apply to URI? So at the undergraduate level, um, it's pretty simple, straightforward, the common application, official high school transcripts, um, senior course list. Um, now, because I'm speaking to Indian students, there are many Indian students who don't necessarily have to deal with the English portion, but sometimes we do require TOEFL, IELTS, or Duolingo as proof of English proficiency. One letter of recommendation is perfectly enough for the College of Engineering. Uh, SAT and ACT scores are optional, and the deadline for you guys in particular will be December 1st because the College of Engineering is actually pretty uh, competitive. At the graduate checklist, I would like to say please do check um, with each department and program because it really varies. I mean, there are some certain general requirements. So for example, bachelor's degree. And I want to emphasize again, because I'm speaking to the audience in India, that four-year programs are accepted, three-year programs are not. So if it's a three-year program, you will have to complete it with one year, either at the University of Rhode Island or another um, institution um, just to complete the four years, right? Then you have the CAS and personal statement, um, then all the transcripts um, that you have, the GPA generally 3.0 or higher, but again, double check those uh, requirements uh, within the department and program. The same applies to um, English uh, proficiency, and this one is going to be mandatory for sure two to three letters of recommendation and the scores of GRE, GMAT, or MAT. Um, the cost, so I highlighted here for you the out-of-state, also international um, cost of the undergraduate um, programs on the left. It doesn't really matter which program you're gonna pick because it's the same price for all of them and the same with the graduate. Um, so you can sort of compare those costs. The one at the bottom the, uh, in the undergraduate is in case you wanna stay on campus, which I always um, recommend. Um, as far as scholarships, um, at the graduate level, you don't really get a scholarship when you are admitted. However, you can still be nominated by the department uh, later on in your career, and that can cover your um, individual tuition and 20% of graduate student fees. At the undergraduate level, it's um, um, we have two types. So we have the merit scholarship, which um, can cover up to $15,000 a year, and it's renewable. Uh, your application, so there's no separate application for that. However, your application to the university must be completed by December 1st. It's based primarily on either SAT or ACT scores if, if those are available, uh, but predominantly also your GPA, and it's pretty much on an individual basis here. 
and we automatically review all applications for that. When it comes to the Thomas and Ryan Scholars program, it's completely new. Uh, last September was the first, or I should say last um, uh, fall was the first time that it actually um, got implemented. And it's extremely uh, competitive, but it covers literally everything. And so everything is listed here. I'm not, go I'm not going to go through this whole list, but it covers everything. It's the, as we call it, a free ride. Your application must be completed by December 1st. And again, by the application, I mean the university application. There's no separate application. And then we, by looking at your applications, sort of have an idea whether or not you're competitive enough, so to speak. And then there's a separate committee that's going to pick um, a, a certain number of winners. This year, I think we had about 10 or 15 of them. So that's pretty much it for me. I don't know if you have any questions. I will definitely stay here. So again, just to remind you, I focus predominantly on the College of Engineering, but if anyone's interested in any other programs, or if you want to shift and change those programs and change your majors, the flexibility of our system is there for you. Thank you so very much.